Could the Cowboys select an interior offensive lineman at pick number 24 and which one best fits their offense? All that more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On. Locked On. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, let's start with this. Do you think a month from now when the Cowboys make their pick at number 24, they will be selecting an offensive lineman at 24? Yes or no? I think so. I mean, if I had to, if, if you're giving me the yes or no answer and I can only choose one, then I, I honestly think that in a rare case, when you're having to choose between multiple needs and multiple positions that might be available, I, I would say that the odds aren't favorite it has to be an offensive lineman simply because the need matches the value so well there. They're going to have a it seems like to me they'll likely have multiple options at the position when they get to 24. Um, and I, I just think that there's several good players that they could choose from that that fit what they want to do. And and then on top of that, you know, like the free agent spending, the, the market as it stands right now, it doesn't look like there's really much recourse outside of of, of the draft, picking specifically at 24 or potentially at 56, where you're going to be able to find a, a, a starting level offensive guard who you hope to be. Yeah. On par with Connor Williams, and then hopefully better than Connor Williams. All right, so we're going to be looking at Tyler Linderbaum from Iowa, uh, Kenyon Green from Texas A&M, and Zion Johnson from Boston College today. But before we get there, Lynn, I have a question to ask you. Uh, we think the Cowboys could take a guard slash center there, but should they? We always talk about the money five positions and how valuable it is to hit on a pass rusher or a cornerback. Is there a lot of value in drafting a left guard or a center in round one? Does it make sense to do that when in free agency you can sign a guy like, I don't know, Connor Williams for six or seven million dollars a year, or even a near Pro Bowl guy like James Daniel for, well, I think he went for eight or nine million dollars. Does it make financial sense for the Cowboys to do that? I think that it's probably not the better financial decision to go that route, but I also think that we shouldn't be allowing that to be the end all be all of our decision making on how you're selecting at twenty at twenty four. You know, it's different. That's the difference, you, right? If it's if it's a top fifteen pick, yeah, that's where it's really hard to stomach a guard. I, I can kind of get it at twenty four. Yeah, exactly. I think you know at the end of the at the end of the first round. Uh, I think it's more important that you're just picking the talented players that are left and not as much worrying about positional cost value and, and what it, what effect that might have on your cap and that sort of thing. I, I just think that at 24, you're, you're, you're taking whatever the draft gods have dropped upon you and you're thrilled that you've got a talented player. I, I'm not as cons- – I mean, I think it weighs into your decision-making. If you had a guy on your board that was a defensive end that you liked on the same level as these guys – that could be the break, the tiebreaker, yeah. right? I'm okay with that, but I don't think that this that should be the deciding factor or, or the the you know the main uh, crux of why you don't select someone like Zion Johnson if he falls to you at 24. What if it's a receiver? I think again, I think it still applies. I think I think the receiver. The difference is that you have a little bit even more of a, of a need bump, right? So if there's a guy that falls to you at 24 that you like on par with these offensive linemen, I think he gets the similar sort of need bump that the offensive yeah, lineman does, okay. and then he also gets an additional money five position bump. So I think it's all things that just like you know smart. Smart NFL teams, they put this into their grade scaling. You know, they, they put it into their grades. They they already factor it in. So this is not something that has to be decided. You know, you don't have to do that quick math on the on the day. It's already added into the player's grade when they when they yep. put the final grade on the board. All right, let's start with Tyler Linderbaum. He's probably the player that we've talked the most about on this podcast so far, just because he's been a name that's been mentioned in, you know, 
uh, slotted to the Cowboys for months now. But Iowa Center, what did you think? Let's start with the negative because we're going to get into a ton of positive here. Uh, there's no way around this. He is undersized, completely undersized. He's mm-hmm. He is 6'2", but he's under 300 pounds. He's at 296, which is still, I think, better than a lot of us expected, honestly, based on what we saw of him during the year. He's got 10-inch hands, but he has 31 and 1 8 inch arms, which is very short-armed. Um, now, and, for centers, you know, that's fourth percentile since 2000. For centers, which means for centers, yeah, which which is you know of it's, all the five positions that you play on the offensive line, center has got to be the one yeah. that where length is the least important. One percentile for all offensive linemen. Yeah, I and mean, that's not great, you know. <laughs> so uh, outside of that, I, I mean, he test you know didn't test you know kind of and, and, yep. yeah yeah and, and and even if he did, I don't know that it was going to be you know incredibly impressive. I think maybe what you would have saw was really great shuffle uh, shuttle numbers from him because i think that that's what he does well now let's talk about all the good stuff i mean he may have the best center tape i think i've ever seen i I mean it's it's unbelievable he is certainly i think the best run blocking center i've ever witnessed Uh, his ability to get to the second level is just unparalleled uh he 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 just he he gets unimpeded he's got has no wasted steps uh he's athletic and quick uh, and and sudden and and when he mm-hmm. gets onto guys, he understands how to use leverage. He understands how to stick on blocks. He doesn't get knocked off. He doesn't fall off blocks. His technique is is absolutely beautiful uh, for a guy who's coming into the NFL uh, at a position where technique really really matters. Um, you know, I think we've gone over <laughs> Tyler Lindenbaum's game. You know, for the last several months, because it's been a name that we've been highlighting for a long time, because for good reason, like this guy's yeah. tape really, really sticks out when you watch it, and 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 it's easy to get excited there. Um, and I think that the the things that we are pointed out about his size, all that he accomplished, all that he accomplished at a school like Iowa, which is you mm-hmm. know no joke, uh, at the size that he's at. So uh, you know, and it's not like he uh, played against subpar uh, you know talent. The Big Ten has no, incredible no. defensive linemen, you know, all over the place. I mean, if, if there's one spot, one area where the Big Ten can compete with the SEC, you would say at the offensive and defensive line play, I think that, that they're probably on par with each other. So it's not like this guy didn't isn't an incredibly accomplished player. He's an incredibly accomplished player. He's got tape to match. Really, the downside here is the athleticism is limiting, or specifically his size. What is that going to mean when he has to take on a nose tackle one on one? What does that mean when they've got a 5 0 front and they're running pass rush moves and he gets one on one with a big, strong uh, nose tackle who can rush the passer? How is he going to handle that? I think these are all very, very fair questions that a team's going to need to ask themselves. But the reason that the teams are going to need to ask themselves is because this dude's tape is the giant blinking red light that everyone talks about i mean it's it's unbelievable to watch it's mesmerizing and frankly i I think that there are a lot of offensive line coaches there's a lot of offensive coaches who if they don't draft tyler linderbaum they're gonna have to be talking themselves out of it because because they're so it's just so amazing to watch that you feel like this guy should be if he wasn't a center if he wasn't just a little bit undersized no brainer top 10 pick in my sure. in my opinion just because i think he is just a sure thing uh and 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 has talent that is is really rare for the position coming into the nfl yeah my only question is like yes the tape is so good but will it translate to the nfl like it it's is, a fair question i mean as dominant as a player as he is he just might be too small for the league and you don't see it very often but there's a couple times where like guys can long arm him a little bit, especially in pass blocking. Right. And can kind of walk him back to the quarterback is I only saw two or three times during the entire 2021 season, but is it going to be a problem in the NFL? Is it going to happen two or three times a quarter in the NFL? I don't know, but if, if you could tell me it's not a big deal at all, sign me up for him at 24 all day long because he is a fantastic center prospect. I just don't know if the Cowboys want a smaller center. I, I just kind of get the sense that they like these big 320 pound centers that can kind of protect the middle of the pocket. I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, I think two things. One, I, I think the Cowboys have been very clear about the idea that they like having a very sturdy uh, front three, you know, in their offensive line. So that is certainly something to consider. And, and I think that the other thing to, to really point out here is that, you know, I much like it cuts to his positive that Iowa is no slouch of a football program, it also cuts to his negative because Iowa's got one of the best weight rooms and one of the best, you know, weight cl- weight yeah. programs in all of the uh, of college football. And the most of this guy after three years, and it's not like he's not a hard worker. So I, I think this is what I'm saying is that it's pretty clear that Tyler Linderbaum is likely tapped out athletic. I, I don't know I that think he's, he played at like 292. If I had the yeah, right. and, and I think he bulked up to 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 what you know get on that scale to weigh 296 i don't know that he actually will play at 296 i certainly don't think he's ever going to play at over 300 pounds no, just never. based on the on the way he looks so uh that's something that you need to be okay with are you going to be running a lot more zone scheme stuff where you're really needing your your off uh, center to cut the defense in half to get to the second level to make those blocks uh to seal off uh, uh things then this guy is is the guy you like are you going to be running more power scheme? Are you going to be running more man stuff? Are you going to be asking uh, 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 a, a center to uh, drive out a, a nose tackle in or, on it by himself uh, in order to, to create holes? I don't know if Linderbaum is going to have that same level of success that he did in college in the NFL yep. because of the size thing. It's really scary, um, but I, I honestly would, I would take a chance on a guy like Linderbaum because, like I said, the tape is just too good. It's pretty weird. Now you are, he is a major, major outlier when it comes to size and you have to ignore that a little bit, but because the tape is so good and actually he was on the freaks list. Like it sounds like he was going to run like maybe in the four eights. I believe it. Pretty incredible. Uh, So maybe if he, maybe he'll do some testing before the, the draft gets here. And if you got the amazing tape, you've got great athleticism. Maybe it's a little easier to stomach. We'll see. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's talk about a couple guards that the Cowboys could be interested in. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about Bet Online. It's that time of year again as college basketball season and tournament season is finally upon us. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. Bet Online remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering needs, including live betting in your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, let's talk about Zion Johnson, who is, I, I got to believe, is the favorite probably to be the Cowboys pick right now. At least if you look at mock drafts, more often than not, I see him mocked to the Cowboys at number 24. And for good reason. He's a really yeah. good prospect that's had a fantastic pre-draft process. What did you see when you turned on the, the tape and watched Zion? Thick boy guard. You know, he's <laughs> like, he's 6'3", 312 pounds, and, and he's just thick everywhere, right? He's got wide body with good muscle distribution, big hands, decent arm length for his height. Um, you know, he's new to the position. He's new to the sport. You know, like he, he came to the sport late and, and mm-hmm. there are some aspects of his game that kind of reflect that. He has a very weird stance. Uh, it, it's it works for him. Uh, he he it, it's he's using it OK, but it's very weird. And I don't know, you know, I don't know how to feel about how teams are going to feel about it. Right. I don't know how to feel about how offensive line coaches are going to feel about it. Are they going to feel the need to bring him in? And then completely rework his stance. And if they do, you know, what does that mean? How long is that going to take to fix or, or to go through? I, I wouldn't either, but I'm also not, you know, a guy who's being paid to be an offensive line coach who feels yeah. like they need to fix things that may not be broken. So yeah. uh, I, I think that that's something to keep in mind, not necessarily that it's a problem for him, but in the context of, is there going to be an offensive line coach who says, yeah, we'll draft him, but we need to completely redo his stance. And if they do, what does that mean for his development? Uh, can really, really move well. I mean, I, I, he get much like uh, we talked about Linderbaum, gets to the second level very quickly. For a guy, his size and his kind of stocky build uh, has great body control, really understands like how to move. I love his kind of 
uh, his pad level, just when he's moving around, you know, mm-hmm. like he keeps a, a kind of a forward lean and, and a low pad. So he's ready for strikes. And he's also ready if, if he takes a strike, uh, he's, you know, which helps with his balance. Um, you know, despite how effective it is and it kind of going back to the, to the uh, weird stance to fight, despite how effective he is, it all looks a little weird mm-hmm. it, 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 it doesn't look like it's supposed to and, and which yes. again i think is going to really reveal a lot about the offensive line coach who who gets him right is, is are they going to try to completely rework his stuff and, and try to make it look like the rest of the guys on the team or are they going to allow him to you know thrive in, in the way that he does things that that'll be an interesting thing uh he will you know some of that shows up because he will lose technique at times when he's trying to bully guys. I mean, because he can. Yeah. He's, he's got really powerful yeah. hands. He wants to, like, you know, throw guys to the ground. Sometimes he'll stop his feet when he's uncertain about what he's seeing. And when he stops his feet and he keeps his hands moving, uh, he's either going to, you know, give up a whole bunch of holding calls or uh, guys are going to get around him because without, without your feet moving, your hands are not enough to stop an NFL defensive lineman. Uh, despite that, uh, uh, he, he can get lured in and out on twist stunts. I saw that several different times where uh, stunts were coming in and out on, on either side of him, mm-hmm. and he and his eyes get distracted. And he doesn't get his eyes back to where they need to, uh, so he can you know struggle kind of getting pulled in and out on stunts. Despite all that, he's a very good mirror athlete, so the so the physical ability is there. His punch is a little bit inconsistent. I mean, again, all the things that all the things that I had in my notes were uh he hasn't played enough you know he hasn't played enough snaps yet he's still kind of a work in progress uh but he, you know again physical athlete he stays on his feet very well for for uh, a guy that size uh and, and he has the requisite athleticism to play the position where does he win i put him down as an athletic guard with big upside my unanswered question is that he's an older athletic player who came late to the game what does that mean his upside looks like? I yeah. think that's what's hard to dictate because it's it's kind of a weird mixture of he's an older player, but he still has development that he yeah. needs to do, you know, and so it, it it makes his floor a little more murky and it's actually a ceiling as well, a little more murky. I feel pretty confident you could draft him and plug him in and he could start for you and next year. And he'll figure year, it out. Yeah. And he'll figure it out. I, I think the thing that would be a little bit scary is if you had – a guy who was too much of a tinker at offensive line coach and starts just working on this guy and then just has him completely in a mess I, by the end of training camp and that you have to scrap all of it and go back to the, the drawing. I mean, like he would be a disaster with Paul Alexander, right? The Cowboys former yes, offensive line yeah. coach, right? Uh, what was the guy in Seattle? I, I, I can't remember. Tom uh, Cable. Uh, Cable, exactly the same thing yeah. where, where he has very specific things that he wants you to do and, and, yeah. and, I just think it's it would have been a problem. Uh, my question for Zion: Does he have an elite trait or elite skill that separates him from other guards, or is he just pretty well-rounded, very good athlete, good pass blocker? I mean, is there anything that sets him, makes him considered an elite prospect, or is it just his appeal is that he's just good everywhere? Yeah, I mean, he's got like. <laughs> elite well-rounded skills i don't know you're right i mean it, it's it's not like he's a greater more than other guards or he's you know, it's not like Quentin Nelson with insane power or anything like that right yeah i i think he's got very good power very good athleticism um and i think that you know these are the kind of guys who if they can find a way to get better from where they are uh, uh, these are the types that end up being kind of pro bowls, all pros, because they don't have a weakness to their, their game. I mean, he, you know, he has some things that he needs to work on and some inconsistency stuff, but I think if he can kind of find a way to get more consistent with that, be able to further lean into this technique and kind of just find a little bit more uh, ability to, to just be able to consistently get the punches where they need to be, be able to consistently keep his feet moving, be able to learn, you know, eye discipline to not kind of get drawn in by uh, the, the eye candy the defensive line is providing. I think yeah. that this is a guy that could be a Pro Bowl guard for a long time. Uh, one question that I know Cowboy fans will want to know is, is he more of a guard that can hold the middle of the pocket or is he more of the athlete that you want to get out in space and move him that way? <sighs> Uh, you know, I mean, he's not he's not really specifically either. I, I think he can do both. Like right now, I think he's a very good mirror athlete, but I do think that he needs to 
get some work done on, you know, anchoring down and, and kind of, you know, solidifying the, the front of the pocket. If See, you're asking me to choose between the two, right? Like my, my fear is that the Cowboys, because Connor Williams wasn't that Connor Williams was the guy that you yeah. wanted to get out in space is that they're going to go the opposite way. We want to find a big left guard that will hold the middle of the pocket to make sure Dak can step up and throw. And that's your, yeah, that's your fear. Well, no, it's not a fear. I, I just, I, I want. Oh, you want Zion Johnson, and you're afraid that that's why they would pass on him is because well, potentially, of right? I, yeah. I, I'd like to see a guy that can do both, right? I, I'm just yeah. worried that they're going to go too far the other direction, right? That's fair. Get, yeah, I, they get one of these big lumbering guards that just has the size and is not going to get bullied so much, but you can't do as much in terms of like zone blocking and all that kind of stuff. I don't think that the, I would not put Zion Johnson as the course correction the wrong way. No, neither you know, would like, I. Neither would I. Yeah, I, I, I'm and just speaking in general, right? The next guy I think is closer to that, but even then, I, I don't. I wouldn't say that he's like, oh, they've gone too far the other way. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, I think he has some ability, but I just don't I, want I do understand that need. Big sloppy guards like Larry Warford, who was yeah. with the Lions, was kind of that way. They're big, strong, physical, or wasn't it Deontay Brown from Alabama a couple yeah. years ago? The 365. Yeah. I don't think Dallas is going to do that, but my fear is they go more that way than trying to stay athletic and guys that can move a little bit. And Zion certainly can. Like you saw in the Senior Bowl, like when they were running screens, he was incredible in the open field. So. I love Zion. I think he'd be a great pick for the Cowboys. And frankly, that's probably the guy that I'm rooting for at number 24. Yeah, I think he makes a lot of sense. In, in, uh, he's a great fit. Uh, like I said, it's the perfect nexus of, of need and, and value. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. All right. The last guy that we're going to talk about is Kenyon Green, guard from uh, Texas A&M. Very young, only 21 years old, has played in the SEC for three years now, playing left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle. Uh, last year, to, I'll just read the stat breakdown for you, Landon, because it's pretty incredible. 81 snaps at left tackle, 408 snaps at left guard, 106 snaps at right guard, 142 snaps at right tackle. 2020, 690 snaps at left guard, one at center. 2019, 347 at right guard. This guy can play everywhere. Yeah, and, and I, that's what I had in my notes too. Tons of versatility in 2021, played up and down the line. Uh, you know, I have him as a tall with thick lower body. Uh, he, he looks he looks like a right tackle when you when you yeah, see him. He's, he just he's, just by this phys, physical yeah. size, uh, he's absolutely enormous. Powerful, powerful core to torque opponents to the ground. He fires off low for a guy that's six four, uh, but needs to keep his head up because there's times when it feels like his head gets down when he's firing off uh good foot fire and pass pro for a guy that's 320 plus he, he he keeps his feet moving and he fires his feet very quickly which is impressive which you, you know you can see why a guy that is frankly built like a guard i mean six i mean frank right tackle we said but more of kind of that mauling right tackle yeah. for a guy that's 320 plus and less than six five uh he really does move well uh, for for you know considering that um, a move to guard will help with a lot of his issues, but he isn't terrible there. If you need a, someone in a pinch at right tackle, uh, plays with kind of a wide base in pass pro, which you know it may need to get tightened up a little bit in, when he goes inside it to guard. Uh, he's got really good hip flexibility. Yep. Uh, if you watch yep. it, he's got a very nice seat when he's when he's in his uh, uh, in his in his pass protection uh, you know, seat. Basically, uh, gets pads in front of his hips. And, and drives players away in run game. His hands, uh, you know, are, are despite the fact that he can get behind his pads and drives folks, you still see his hands too far outside. And I think that's going to be something that he's going to need to clean up a lot is, you know, uh, he's not playing tackle anymore. So hopefully you, you won't need to see what he did a little bit as much, but he definitely needs to work on getting his hands more inside, or he will get called for holding, uh, in the NFL. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, the flexibility in his lower half is, is so good that it, it, it really improves his lateral quickness. Um, but he's not like a foot swift athlete, you know, like he's he's got good athleticism yep. and good flexibility. Yep. And that helps him move laterally because he has long, longer legs. He's a very uh, average athlete. Yeah, but he's not like a guy that you're like trying to get on the run a bunch or trying. No. I mean, he can do all those things. He's not going to be a problem doing those things, but that's definitely not a strong suit. 
much kind of the opposite of what you were talking about. Well, not the opposite, but kind of to what you were talking about before. He does have a trait. You know, his trait is that he is a powerful leg driving run blocker. You know, I think he can help you as a as a pass protector because he has a ton of experience doing it and because he's big and strong. And, and I think, again, his pass protection issues become less pronounced, I think, when you m- move him into guard because he doesn't have to worry about covering as much space. He's got guys on either side. I think I thought his tape work- was I thought his tape was much better at the end of the year. Like once yeah. he he had a bunch of penalties early on in, in the 2021 season, but it seemed like halfway through the season he started to play much much better. Well, I think it's his hands. You know, okay. I, honestly, like he, it's, I just made the camera shake with my huge bang. I, I think it's his hands. You know, like he, you know, as he started firing his hands more into the chest and less and try to have him slip outside the shoulders, the, the holding calls went down. And again, I think also you don't need to worry as much about getting your hands on the outside of the guy uh, when you're playing inside between two guys. You know, you can really kind of focus on it. And he has. You know, the thing you really worry about for guys that are holders, right, is that when their hands get too far outside and they're really bad about keeping their feet firing, right? Because that what happens is your feet stop, your hands are outside, the guy makes a move and then you're trying to like reach and then you're grabbing him to prevent him instead of moving your feet to slide with him. And I think for this guy, that's not as much of an issue because his feet are very good. You know, for uh, they're not like he's not, like I said, swift, but he's very good about keeping his feet firing and, and, and he's consistent with that. And I think, you know, that's going to take him a, a, a long way. Having said all that, uh, my unanswered question for him were hands outside plus borderline athleticism could be bad combo for penalties. Can he overcome one or both? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, just going back to his size. Uh, for offensive tackle, if you put him at offensive tackle, 75th percentile weight, 81 percentile wingspan, 54 percentile arm length, 76 percentile hand size. Like he's got the size to be a legitimate starting left tackle. The athleticism, maybe not so much, but I have a couple questions for you just about all three of these offensive lines. Yeah. Um, and actually, well, here's five of them. Let's run right through them. Of these three players, who has the highest upside? I'm going to say green, actually, I think, uh, as far as upside goes. I would agree with you. Uh, who has the most position flex? I think green, to be I honest. Agree. I agree. Mean, who I mean, has the most power? Over. I think green. Uh, well, I, you know, honestly, Zion Johnson pound for pound might be stronger, to be honest. Probably. But which guy do you feel better about driving a defensive tackle off uh, the ball? Kenyon Green. Yeah. Green. Which one do we think the Cowboys will like the most at 24? Is this a very leading question? Is that where we're going with? I'm just asking questions. I like Zion better. I just when you frame it like that, it's man, it's it's easy to see why the Cowboys would like him. Who do you think is the most likely to be a high end day one starter? I, I think the most likely to be the most high end day one starter is Ian Johnson. I, I, I mean, that. just because I, I, I think, think that's likely. Yeah, but I could see why the Cowboys would be really interested in Green. They yeah. typically like to take left tackles or tackles and move them inside a guard. They're probably looking for somebody that has more power than what Connor Williams did. Now Green's not even close to the same athlete as Connor Williams or Zion, but they're probably going to live with it because of what he can do in the run game. And it's why I kind of think the Cowboys might be leaning green over Zion and Linderbaum. I, I I'm going to broach the, the, the elephant in the room that I cannot believe that you have not brought up yet. Marcus, can you give me an age check on what Zion, uh, what Zion Johnson is right now? Uh, Zion is, I believe 23 is going to be 23 when he gets drafted. I think he's, isn't he going to be 24? Is it uh, wrong? No, that's Reinman. Uh, okay, from- maybe I was, maybe I was, but I will point out that Green is at least two years younger than Johnson, and I'm very surprised that you uh, w- wouldn't uh, yeah, automatically Z- prefer Green because of that alone. Frankly. Zion will be 23 during his rookie year. Kenyon Green just turned 21 years old. I don't know if it matters on the offensive line, to be honest with you. You think that that has more to do with your breakout athleticism? Yeah. At, at just because positions? I think with offensive linemen, it's so much more. You can about play like, so much longer. Yeah. Yeah, that and 
I kind of even like the guys that are a little bit older, like Zach Norton, that you don't have to worry yeah. about their strength and stuff. Like Martin came into the league ready to go. Connor Williams, it took two years for him to be strong enough really to be a starter, right? So, you know, he, that's and I think that's what I want I go back to is that where the Cowboys have found issues, I feel like, are situations where they draft a guy that is athletic enough but not strong enough they and then they yeah. and they and they aren't doing it like it's not happening like i, I or, think what what the or you what, they, they it, it is happening but it's happening in year 5 and year 6 and i yeah. think Connor Williams is trending in that right direction but they don't necessarily want to pay that guy hoping that he's eventually going to get stronger but he wasn't even there yet last year no he was like and, and that's 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 concerning i mean not that he isn't a good player not that you wouldn't want him at, at some point maybe on his second contract but like i think that may be informing this kind of decision between green and johnson is that look maybe green isn't the athlete that we want but maybe it's easier to make him a better foot athlete than it is to make you know X guard. I mean, I don't want to say Johnson because Johnson yeah, just whoever, straight, right? But right. whoever, like a stronger player, right? Mm -hmm. Like trying to develop that strength may be more difficult than you know giving the Kenyon Green some speed speed training and, with guys and getting him a little bit more foot and, flash footed. And that's why I think Linderbaum isn't really going to be an option for Dallas. I I, I yeah, think they're not. so nervous about that. You know, having a, into your offensive line over the last couple of years, it's been very athletic, but maybe not strong enough. Is that the right way to go? And we could certainly have a debate about that. But I, I just get the sense that that's probably what the Cowboys are going to do here. Yeah, you know, and I, 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 I think you know one of the issues that they've had across across the line is just the inability to knock defensive linemen back. And I think yeah. this is that is what Kenyon Green should be able to do. Just to be clear, of these three <laughs> offensive linemen that we talked about, Tyler Linderbaum, Zion Johnson, and Kenyon Green, which one would you want for the Cowboys? I think Williams is still – I mean, Johnson is still the guy that uh, yeah. I would probably prefer. Uh, I That's like Green I a lot, though, too. But I, I, So I, I'm not I – w I would honestly would not be upset with any of these three picks. I think yeah, – I'm in the same way. I, I like Zion at least – I think I like Zion a tier better than Kenyon Green, but I won't be upset with it because I think Green – Makes a lot of sense. He's got the SEC production. He's versatile, and he fits it deep. So I, I get it. But we're both on the Zion train pretty clear. I think so, yeah. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you can download the show wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, check us out on YouTube, Locked on Cowboys. You could follow us on Twitter at Locked on Cowboys. Check out Landon at McCoolBCB on Twitter. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.